continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Lola Albright as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Martin Payton has returned to Payton Place. He has taken back his house and has begun to manipulate the lives of the people around him. Tonight, he has invited his grandson, Rodney Harrington, to dinner. Rodney Harrington, who is on trial for murder, now faces another trial in this house. Well, Master Rodney, what are you waiting for? You remember, don't you? The way your mother used to entertain when you were a small boy. Candlelight, flowers, gracious, everything done to perfection. That's all gone now, isn't it? Your mother was the only one who knew how to serve a dinner. Catherine knew how to run a house properly. You do remember, don't you? I know your mother was ill in the last days of her life, but before that, you do remember before that, don't you? I remember. I stopped by the cemetery today. According to the caretaker, you're apparently too busy to visit your mother's grave. I don't have to go there to remember my mother. I don't have to be reminded of what I felt for her by a piece of stone. I suppose you know how unhappy she was in the last years of her life. You all lived under the same roof, this roof. You must have known. Or did your father try to hide it? Norman and I knew that they quarreled. Quarreled? Quarreled? Your mother died of a broken heart. She didn't want to live anymore. You know why? Do you? Because of your father's infidelities. That's a lie. A vicious lie. She told me about it many times. She had no one else to talk to. She was a painfully lonely woman. She died in surgery. It was not my father's fault. I tell you, she died from a life of torment. That I know to be the truth. You resent my saying it, but I'm too old a man to be afraid of the truth. What are you afraid of, Rodney? What interests you? What do you want out of life? I want to get back what belongs to us. This house. The mill. Our good name. The only good name in this town is mine. Peyton. The mill is mine. It always has been mine. Your father was an employee of mine. This house is mine. All the years you lived here, it was still mine. Most of this town is mine. You want to get those things. I assume you understand that ambition involves sacrifice, making a choice. You mean to take sides? Taking sides. Stop it, Norman. Stop it now. Dad, I was only kidding. No, you weren't. That's the way it begins. A little joking, teasing. A hint of jealousy planted by Martin Payton. Come on, Dad. He does it so well now. It's a game, Norman. Martin Payton's favorite game. He encourages everybody to play. The catch is only he can win. I'm an authority on that game, Norman. I've played it for years. 
It started before your mother and I were married. It started when I began to believe what Martin Payton planted in my mind and in a lot of other people's minds that I wasn't good enough for Catherine Payton. Come on, Dad. You said you were tired. Listen to me, Norman. Martin Payton fashioned his daughter in his own image. He was a king, and she was his princess. I loved your mother very much, Norman. But I don't believe she ever considered me to be her equal. She loved me, but she was self-willed, spoiled, and selfish. Dad, you don't have to tell me this. Yes, I do, Norman. Your mother, like her father, believed that people were born to be used, possessed. It wasn't her fault. He molded her, convinced her that she could do no wrong. Maybe I was less sensitive than she was. I, I don't know. But one day, I stopped caring what Martin Payton thought of me. I couldn't help it, Norman. I stopped caring what your mother demanded of me. And it worked. I got things done. The mill ran smoothly and profitably for the first time. But your mother became more and more jealous. When I was at the mill, she telephoned me every hour, threatening me, ordering me, demanding that I come home to keep her company. When I got home, She'd have a headache. She was unavailable. Dad, I... Norman, don't let this happen to you. Don't abandon what you are and who you are to play the old man's game. Don't let him draw us apart. Do you understand me, Norman? Sure, Dad. Hospital today. How's your daughter coming along? She's all right. Is she out of the coma? Yes, she's out of it. Good. We want to question her about the accident as soon as possible. Well, you're going to have to wait because Allison doesn't remember the accident. That's not uncommon, you know. I know of accident cases where the victim blocked out for over a day, but it'll come back. I'd still like to talk to her. Well, you're going to have to ask Dr. Rossi. Allison isn't doing as well as we'd hoped. Awfully sorry to hear that. Thank you. I can't go in there. Sorry. Well, what's wrong? What's happened? I have no authority. What's wrong with Allison? Look, you'll have to ask Dr. Rossi. He'll explain it to you. You find him up an X-ray. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Do I know you? Do you think you know me? No. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure. I've been in to see you every day for almost three weeks. Do you work here? Yes. Are you a doctor? I'm a physical therapist. My name is Russ Gehring. Oh, yes, my mother told me somebody was giving me therapy. How do you do? That's why I'm here now. It seems so strange, you coming here every day and my not even knowing it. I'm sure it all seems very strange to you. Thanks for the books. Your mother gave me quite a collection. Anderson, Grimm. I was a Tom Swift boy myself. My mother talked to you about me here while I was... Yes. I don't think I'll ever get over the strangeness of it. You'll get over it. 
How long will it be before I'm better? Not long, if you work hard. I don't want to be handicapped. I'm sure you don't. I don't want to be a cripple. None of that. Would you uh, get me a glass of water, please? It's right here. You can reach it. I can't. Yes, you can. Force yourself. I can't. Try. I can't. It hurts. It's going to hurt. But you must try. You must try. Come in. Allison. Well, all right. What is it? Nothing's wrong. Well, then why do they keep out sign on our door? Oh, well, the hospital has certain rules and regulations to protect their patients. Okay, now, what is it you're not telling me? Well, I'm not not telling you anything. Look, we put those uh, keep out signs on the delivery room doors because the fathers are, have a tendency to faint. They're not prepared for the uh, experience. You want some coffee? Just some facts. Well, I was trying to tell you, and obviously very badly, is that the, the trauma of the accident caused certain residual effects. What do you mean? Well, Allison has had a certain amount of loss of memory. Now, this may be permanent, it may be temporary. We don't know. That's why I'm studying these tests, to see if there's been any brain damage. And? Well, I haven't finished yet. Eventually, I think that uh, it'll all be pieced together. Well, may I see her? Yes. Yes, I think it might be beneficial. Rob. Look, don't... Uh, don't react negatively to what she says or how she behaves. Well, you see, she doesn't remember that Elliot Carson is her father. She's blocked it out of her mind. Will she remember me? Be careful. Morning. Uh, Russ. See you later. Hello, Rodney. Hi, Princess. Oh, you look great. Thank you. Well, here we are. Yes. Where's Norman? Why didn't he come with you? Well, he'll be here. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, good. Can't wait to see him. Is he having trouble with school still? Or did, or did he graduate? Did we both graduate? Yeah. Y yeah, you both graduated. Do you remember graduation night? Well, yes, there was a party. And Mother was there. And Mr. Carson. We had fun, didn't we? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was fun. And afterwards, we, uh, we had a, a, a breakfast at my place. Just the two of us. We cooked scrambled eggs. We did. Christine let us mess up the kitchen. No, uh, I don't live in the, uh, in the big house anymore, Allison. I'm, I'm talking about the apartment on Glover Street. Oh, yes, of course. How silly of me. How could you live at the big house when the Schusters live there? What apartment? Uh, it's over the drugstore. Tell me about yourself, Rodney. Will you be going back to college? That's a silly question. Of course you will. Do you remember the last time we saw one another? Before your accident. 
No, not really. What happened? You came to, you came to see me. You told me you wanted to help me. Help you? Why? Rodney, is something wrong? It doesn't matter. Thank you for the visit. But don't forget to tell Norman to come and see me. Send her in. Well, you're a long way from home, Phyllis. How are you? John, I'm worried. I've called your home almost every day. Late morning, sometimes in the afternoon. I thought I'd catch Marion at home if she was home. What's happened, John? Well, I was going to tell you, but I didn't want to get you involved or worry you. But she's my sister. Where is she? I don't know. Have you tried to find her? Oh, I've checked every place I can think of. A few days ago, Marion and I had a fight. I assumed she'd gone to Boston to stay with you. And obviously, she's gone someplace else to cool off. It's not like Marion to suddenly disappear. Oh, I'll don't Why go jumping to any conclusions, Phyllis. Sit down. Marion's a very level-headed girl. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd simply powder my nose and drive back to Boston. Well, that's exactly what I'd recommend, Phyllis. Now, we both know Marion well enough to know that wherever she is, she's all right. Who's Russ Gehring? Gehring? Physiotherapist at the local hospital. Marion worked with him. Why? Would he have any idea where Marion might have gone? John, I'm not trying to pry, but Russ Gehring called last night and asked for Marion. Well, I gave him your address when I thought she was staying with you. He said he wanted to send her some letters from the children at the hospital. Oh. I was worried. Oh, well, I'm sure that he called about something to do with her work at the hospital. <laughs> well, look, Phyllis, all this means is that for some reason, Marion wanted to be alone. And by not letting me know where she is, she's punishing me. And I probably deserve it. But believe me, I'm sure she's all right. Will you call me as soon as you hear from her? Sure. Will you uh, keep this to yourself? Of course. Don't forget the minute you hear from her. I won't forget. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. Sergeant? I, uh, I want to take advantage of my office. Sir? No, unofficially and uh, just between you and me. There's a young man working at the doctor's hospital, a physiotherapist. His name's Gehring, G-E-H-R-I-N-G. -E First name, Russ. I assume Russell. I want to find out about his background. Well, anything specific? Well, I don't know what I'm looking for, Sergeant. But I'm looking. Right away. Thank you. Mr. Carson. Thank you. This 
way, please. Mr. Payton, this is Elliot Carson. I know that. Would you like tea, Mr. Payton? Tea? No, thank you. Don't disturb us. Yes, Mr. Payton. I'll never forget seeing your picture in the papers the day they dragged you off to the jail. You look like an angry young animal that knows it's being sent to the slaughterhouse. I didn't come here to talk about that. Sit down. Sit down. It hurts my neck to look up to people. How does it feel to be a newspaper editor? Fine. What's the significance of your coming back to Peyton Place? And I presume it has something to do with the mill. You presume wrong. I'm here to supervise the building of a suitable memorial to my late daughter, Catherine. Is that unusual? Well, put it down. What do you plan on doing about automating the mill? My daughter's memory brings me here, Mr. Carton. Can you understand that? I'm told that your daughter is in the hospital. Yes. Well, how is she? She's coming along. Have you come here for your grandson's trial? And how is your wife? She's well. Good. Thank you. My strongest recollections are of your first wife, Elizabeth. She was a lovely young woman. What a tragedy that was. Well, unless you have a statement to make, Mr. Payton. I do. As you may phrase it, any way you like. I wish to repeat my firm conviction that my daughter did not kill your wife. My daughter was slandered, maligned, by the man who was responsible. I know you didn't do it. I got it all along. You knew it too. Every day of the 18 years you spent in prison, we were victims of an insidious lie, a lie that mocks the dead. One doesn't build a memorial to a murderess. No. The Harrington name will be erased from the monument I'm building for my daughter. That will proclaim her innocence once and for all. If you care to take an ad in the Clarion, I'll be happy to send you a rate card. An ad? What is that supposed to mean? I run a newspaper, Mr. Payton. I can't air my own personal opinions in it, or yours. And I'm not interested in writing an article about your firm convictions concerning your daughter's innocence, or more specifically, your son-in-law's guilt. The libel laws apply to everything in a newspaper. I'd still like an answer to my question. Why did you come back to Peyton Place? Continuing story of Peyton Place. Well, it's going to be pretty rough on you, Rita. I know that. I don't think you do. I want to know what can be done, Mike. Specifically. With your permission, I'd like to consult with Dr. Quist. Get a hold of him. Today. Who do you think you are telling me what's appropriate and what's not? You're acting like you're my fiancé or my big brother. And Stephen called you on neither.